Ooh, yeah, I'm Walter Benaziak, the cream of the crop, and this is Top 5, yeah. And that's enough of that. Bet you didn't expect to see this. Today, we're counting down the Top 5 Worst WWE Finishers. On my Twitter, at awesome underscore Walter, I've been talking with you guys quite a bit recently about WWE. So, secrets out. I'm a wrestling fan and have been since I was 13 years old. You know it's fake, right? Yeah. While I don't watch WWE every single week like I used to, I'm still in the know about what's happening in the company and with WrestleMania coming up on April 2nd, I thought now was as good of a time as any to do a couple wrestling related videos. The finisher is a wrestler's move that is supposed to put away his or her opponent, and most of the time they win their match with it. There have been some awesome ones in the long history of World Wrestling Entertainment slash the World Wrestling Federation, but there have also been quite a few really, really, really bad ones. And that's what we're taking a look at today. These are the top five worst WWE finishers. Number five, Big E's Big Ending. Oh Big E, Big Ending! I like Big E. As a member of the New Day, he's been able to show off a lot of his unique personality. And it's better than what he was doing before this. Hell no. Yep, come out on. Big E picks his opponent up on his shoulders and just drops. I'm honestly not sure, but I'm guessing it's supposed to hurt their midsection. Otherwise, it just doesn't make any sense. Big E is a big man, so I get the point of a finisher for him is supposed to show off his strength, but this doesn't really do that. He lifts the guy up on his shoulder, yes, but plenty of small guys can and do do that, so it's not really all that impressive. When he drops, it's almost like a body cutter an RKO to the ribs? I just don't get how this hurts the guy he's giving it to. It's just stupid. Big E should have a finisher that suits him better. Maybe with the inevitable breakup of the New Day, Big E will start a new singles run with a signature move that displays a more serious attitude. At least something that showcases more of his strength, because the big ending sucks. Yippee-ki-yay, mother! Shut your mouth! Time will tell where he ends up, but the first thing I hope they do with him post-New Day is get rid of this lame-ass move. Number four, the Ultimate Warriors Big Splash. Oh, we can get a new champion right now, we're all about soon. Right now, brother, we can get a new champion. I'm here to Big tell Splash you. hooks the leg. Got the, the Ultimate Warrior, absolutely a legend. He inspired tons of wrestlers from this generation, and he was a. Uh, Load the spaceship with the rocket fuel. He was a. Uh, <laughs> he was the Ultimate Warrior. His finisher, however, not so legendary. The move beforehand, perfect for him, lifting a dude totally over his head, then dropping him face first on the mat. Although it's been called kind of dangerous, it looked effective, which is the point. But then the warrior would run off the ropes a couple times and body splash his foe. After the previous move, this just came off anticlimactic. For a guy like the Ultimate Warrior, this was a little too weak considering he's such a powerful force. A lot of the time, he would put his hands down too early and stop himself, which made the move look even worse. It's comparable to other finishing moves from huge stars that haven't aged all that well. While the move itself was pretty bad, the warrior himself was so over with the fans, it really didn't matter. People were into it. They'd go crazy for it. And back in the 80s, smaller moves like that were definitely more acceptable as match finishers. He was one of the most popular wrestlers the WWF ever produced, and his untimely passing a few years ago has put an even stronger aura around his legendary career. So in the long run, it didn't matter much that his finisher wasn't the greatest. But yeah, it wasn't a good one. <laughs> Number three, John Cena's STF. And now John Cena, great counter oh, oh, oh. for the STF. STF's the mission maneuver. Barrett's in trouble. That was a great counter by Cena. We've heard it a billion times. And despite what some of us might think of him, Cena is actually a pretty good wrestler when he needs to be. He's proven that in big matches time and time again. He even pulls off some impressive moves for his size pretty well once in a while. Earth. And really badly other times. John Cena! Look at that! 
the Cena Karana is my favorite, but consistently, the STF has been his worst move. While I realize his main finisher is the FU, oh, sorry, the AA, Cena has beaten what seems like hundreds of wrestlers with his clunky submission move. Thus, it is a finisher. The STF has been around for a long time, and plenty of wrestlers have used it in the past, but I think Cena has pretty much taken ownership of it in the current era. He locks his opponent's leg, then applies a crossface until the guy taps. It should be easy to make look painful. Should be. You know it's bad when Stone Cold Steve Austin calls you out for how terrible the move looks. The STF. Is that what it's called? Step over to hold face lock? It. Yes. <laughs> you gotta snug that thing up for me. Uh, Please? I'll do my best. I think what's most disappointing about this move is that we've seen Cena apply it really well on a few occasions. However, what stays in my memory is how he usually applies it, which just looks awful. The pain looks unbearable. I'm being a little harder on John because despite the overwhelming success of Roman Reigns, Cena is still WWE's number one guy and has been for around 12 years now. So cinch that thing in like we've seen you do or just drop it all together. He doesn't need a submission move anyway. I wanted to congratulate Cena on winning his 16th t Oh, what's that? He lost it already? Really? It almost sounds like that title reign was pointless. <laughs> number two, the great Kali's brain chop. In other words, six and take your oh! The Great Khali was once the World Heavyweight Champion. That's a thing that happened. We all know Khali was only in main events because of his massive size. He was never a very good wrestler, and even Shawn Michaels couldn't pull a good match out of him, but some of his finishers were pretty good. The Punjabi Plunge was an effective looking move for this giant, and even his vice grip looked pretty legit. The one that makes this list is literally just a slow karate chop to the head. Much like Big Show's KO Punch, it's trying to display the massive power of a 7-footer, implying a single hard strike can knock out any opponent. While Show's Punch doesn't make much sense since they're a dime a dozen in wrestling, at least it looks and sounds good most of the time. Oh! Kali's Brain Chop has always looked awful. The only way anyone could make it look halfway decent is taking a quick bump right after, but even then, it's tough to buy into. From what I've heard, Kali is a really nice guy and well liked by his former peers in WWE. I'll even admit that at times he was enjoyable as a babyface. That goofy dance was kind of fun. Beth Phoenix eliminating him from the Royal Rumble is also a memorable moment. I wish the great Kali all the best on his future brain chopping endeavors. I wanted to briefly mention a few finishers that almost made the list. Santino's Cobra. Bad move, but it was so over that I gave it a pass. Also, it's just fun to bend your arm in that motion. Scotty Two Hotties Worm. It's probably the most unrealistic move ever, but during the Attitude Era and after, this finisher always brought people to their feet. Hulk Hogan's Leg Drop. Like the Warriors Big Splash, this hasn't aged well, but I bought it, and so did millions of people for decades. Plus, you let a 300 pound guy jump and sit on your face. Not as much fun as it sounds. Speaking of which. And the number one worst WWE finisher is Mojo Rawley's Hyperdrive. Hyped is being hyped all day, every day. There's that athletic ability off oh. the ropes. Hyperdrive. I'll tell you this right off the bat. I know next to nothing about Mojo Rawley. I guess he was in NXT for a while, formed the Hype Bros with Zack Ryder, and since Ryder's injury, has been getting a small singles push. Apparently, he doesn't even use the move anymore, but the fact that he did in the first part of it, he jumps into the air and hits the guy with his butt. Does he have an abnormally strong butt? I don't understand. In fairness, Naomi uses this exact same part of Raleigh's move as her own finisher called the rear view, but somehow it's more believable than this. Goldust has also used a version of this move before, but not as a finisher. The second part of the hyperdrive is a big jumping sit down thing. At least when Rikishi sat on you, it looked painful. That was a legit move. This is weak as hell, and he won matches with it. I don't really know what else to say. Mojo's career is still in its early stages, but if he did dump this thing, that's a big step in the right direction. I'm pretty comfortable in saying that this is the worst WWE finisher I've ever seen. Let's just hope it never gets worse than this. I wanna hear what you guys think. What is your least favorite WWE finisher? What do you want me to cover next on the show? Leave a comment and let me know.
Make sure you check out Awesome Comics from yesterday, where we ask, does Henry Cavill's Superman suck? Also, if you're interested in more wrestling talk, subscribe to my personal YouTube channel, Awesome underscore Walter, and I'll be posting some wrestling-related content on there soon. Follow me on Twitter to take part in more polls about what I may cover in the future. Come back next week when we count down the top five best WWE finishers. See you then. You're pathetic.